one, we were actually going to be on with Chuck Baldwin this evening, and I'm going to be playing a clip of uh, Chuck's here in just a little bit from his eight-point Mideast Peace Plan. Uh, but unfortunately, when we recorded the broadcast earlier today, we did not capture Chuck's audio. And uh, that was a tremendous disappointment for me because it was actually a wonderful, wonderful uh uh, broadcast together. So we're trying to get Chuck back in next week. I wanted to discuss that eight point uh, peace plan with him uh, that he had suggested in place of uh, Trump's peace plan. And I thought it was kind of interesting, but I'm still going to play that tonight regardless. Uh, so I think it'll be a blessing for you. Uh, if you check Fact News Network, we ran a live broadcast over there uh, just a little bit ago here. You can check it out. Uh, on Fact News Network, covering over what's happening in the Middle East. As I said before, I just want to remind you guys once again, our breaking news stories, many of the breaking news stories are being covered live on Fact News Network. Uh, I'll put a post in the description below. It'll be one of the first links up there for you to look at there, where you can click on that subscribe. Uh, this is where we are covering uh, news that is happening. It, it, it will be less... Uh, it'll, or maybe I should say it'll be more of the non-provocative type of news uh, that whereas here on Israeli News Live, boy, we get into a lot of crazy things here. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're discussing over there the situation with Turkey, NATO's intervention uh, to help Turkey out and Russia and Turkey on the brink of a conflict as well over protecting Syria. Uh, Vanessa Bealey also showing one of Turkey's tanks there, uh, burning there in the streets there. And of course, she's talking about uh, the karma of payback for Turkey for its support of the jihadist troops there. Don't know exactly how this is all going to play out. Don't know whether or not uh, Putin will really do that. As far as I can see, Putin has been uh, on the side of Israel from the very beginning. So I can only imagine that uh, if Putin does, if this is going to go to a full-blown thing, it's because all the actors involved are doing exactly that. They're doing their acting. They're playing their parts. And it may be used to uh, eventually, I don't think it'll happen until after elections here in the United States, but eventually, uh, they would like to see a strike here on the United States. Uh, one thing also I'll mention as well, and I can't say where, I can only tell you that very serious, we have been uh, notified, we've been told, we are definitely being watched. We are being spied on, surveillance. Uh, Big Brother is watching, if you want to call it that, but uh, that information has been handed to us so that we are well aware of it. It is uh, confirmed. We are watched. Our channel is watched. Our phones are being uh, listened in on. Our We're being monitored within our own home. Every, every violation of a constitutional rights you can possibly imagine are occurring uh, right now, right here, as I speak to you. So please keep us in your prayers there. Also, if you would, keep True News in your prayers there. Uh, this uh, uh, True News has been removed from YouTube permanently. Uh, we were there with Rick Wiles recently on the broadcast there. They actually banned the uh, broadcast that we did with Rick, claiming that it was hate speech. It's anything but hate speech. The thing is, we're trying to get truth out about what is really going on in the world. And you're going to hear some of that tonight for yourself directly from one of uh, the Orthodox rabbis. And again, as I always say as well, oh, by the way, real quick before I get into that, True news, you may not be able to see them on YouTube now. And from what I understand, that is a permanent banning. This was their third strike. Uh, we had I, I spoke to some of the, the crew over there today, didn't get a chance to speak to Rick as of yet. Uh, but we certainly will be praying for them, wishing them Godspeed, because Rick uh, and his team have been a voice out there for truth. Rick, like us, once was very pro-Israel. Uh, and, and of course, it's not that we're against Jewish people by no means. We love the Jewish people. In fact, tonight you're going to find out if you're Jewish, uh, there are there is very sinister plans for the Jewish people that are not on board uh, with the New World Order agenda, this beast kingdom rising agenda. But anyway, you can catch Rick's uh, program on his website. His videos still are posted there. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they can you can still listen to him live. You can download uh, podcasts, etc., of all of his broadcasts there. And uh, we will keep you up to date on any other channel they may open in the near future. So anyway, uh, let's get right into the things that are going on that we're going to be covering tonight. 
Rabbi Mendel Kieson. This is a rabbi that my wife has played before. I think it's important that we hear some of the things that he has to say here in this video. And uh, we'll be, me and my wife will be speaking about this more later in a different broadcast over on Patreon. So I'm not going to go into too much information here. But there are some things that I think you do need to hear. Something I think that is very, very important. And one particular spot we're going to look at right now. Uh, and this is where uh, Rabbi Mendel Kieson is speaking about the, what would you call them? the moderate Jews, the reformed Jews, the Jewish people that, uh, that are trying to have some, some kind of sanity in the world, but are not for the agenda per se. Uh, at least that's his thought in there. Sometimes I think they're working both sides of the fence anyway, but I want you to hear what he actually has to say about the Jewish people that they call Arab Erev Rav. Erev Rav, by the way, uh, that is a term in Hebrew used. I'll kind of go ahead and give you a little up, up to date on this so you understand. Erev Rav is considered kind of like a half Jewish, half Egyptian. They were considered to be part of the mixed multitude, which how would they know in the first place? Okay. You could still say it's a mixed multitude even today amongst the Pharisees uh, that are claimed to be direct descendants uh, of the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago because they intermingled their seed with Esau. That's a historical fact. Listen in, though. Is the era of Ralph. The Jews that are not interested in Judaism, really, uh, they believe that the uniqueness of Judaism is not the bond that the Jews have with God, which is the Torah. Their belief about Judaism is that Judaism is unique as a regular civilization. You know? Um, sure, the Torah is great, but so is Shakespeare. You see? So therefore, they focus on the culture of the Jewish people and the contributions of the Jewish people like any other nation. That's why when you go to many of the museums and all that, they all look like American stuff. Because they're all trying to Im imitate America because these things which are basically built in many ways by the era of Rav, uh, Jews who believe this, um, they imitate America. They imitate Western civilization. You see, um, that's their focus. So therefore, they must be terminated. The era of Rav. And uh, they are one. Did you hear what he said? The era of Rav, they must be terminated. Let me play that last little piece there once again for you so you can hear this for yourself because they're all trying to Im imitate America because these things which are basically built in many ways by the year of Rav uh, Jews who believe this um, they imitate America they Im imitate Western civilization you see um, that's their focus so therefore they must be terminated the year of Rav and uh, they are one of the greatest impediments to the messianic approach so if you're Jewish and you happen to be listening to the broadcast tonight, unless you are Orthodox and you are supporting the messianic agenda that they are pushing for right now, which includes President Trump, you're to be terminated. Uh, you're in the way. You're causing problems. That's pretty harsh. Uh, I'm curious to see how they're going to define this one when it comes down at the end of the road, right? Let me play another little section here for you here at 40, uh, 46 minutes. This is where he's talking about Trump being the Messiah. Uh, of course, those of you that listened to the Parnas video that came out, you'll know that this is very much believed that they believe that President Trump is a type of Mashiach, a type of the Messiah. Listen to this. Which he is. You know, in fact, you may be in the Gematria, the gematria of Donald Trump, right, is the gematria, exactly, 424, Mashiach ben Not that he's Mashiach ben David, but he's clearly in the pasha of assisting the messianic process to move forward. And he, you know, he does not know this, unless he decides to listen to this video, you know, but he does not understand. You know, 
Well, the question is, he does know it because it was told to him by Parnas in that private meeting that they released there in Washington, D.C. I want to play one more or two more clips for you real quick here. This one here is at 5620 in the video here. This is where he's talking about President Trump. He's going to be uh, reelected and what's going to happen when he is actually reelected. Listen to this one. What's happening is God is saying, listen, I'm going to destroy you. How? Because I'm going to make your actions so obvious that nobody's going to vote for you, you see. So hopefully what that means is that Trump will then have not only the Senate, a great majority, but he will take over the House, and then Trump will be unleashed. To do what? He will be unleashed to do what? To give back everything to the Jews, which we'll see, right? The whole Eretz Israel. Right? He will protect the Jews from their enemies. The EU, right? the UN, all those nations that hate the Jewish people. The Trump has been protecting them. Think about that. If you go on and watch the video, you also find out that all the nations that were spoken about that uh, by uh, General Wesley Clark to be taken down, uh, Mr. Uh, Keeson also speaks of those nations as well, and that the United States took them out and they were done at the expense of the American taxpayers, and Israel didn't have to pay a single dime to have all of their enemies destroyed in the Middle East. This is why we're going to see what's going to happen to Syria in the very near future here. Syria is also going to be taken out. I want to play one other clip here. He's talking about the Trump peace plan. And I think it's important because right after that, I want to play for you what uh, Chuck Baldwin brought out when he was speaking about the peace plan. And he also gave, uh, in his case, he gave an eight point uh, part of the peace plan. And uh, Rabbi Keeson talks about Trump's peace plan and mentions uh, seven of those uh, declarations there. Let's listen into this right now. The whole land of Israel to the Jews. That's really all it is. Now, is, is, uh, is what's his name, Abbas, gonna accede, you know, agree to this? Well, let's see. Here's what he has to do, right? One, he has to denounce terror. <laughs> Number one. Number two, he has to denounce the payment to the terrorists, which he said he's never going to do. That's number two. Number three, he has to start praising them and naming streets and squares after these guys. That's number three, right? Then number four, right? Not only that, but he also has to stop the textbooks, the educational system that the Jews, you know, Shahid and all that kind of stuff. He's got to do that too. And then number five, right? He's got to give up the right of return. Yeah. Number six, he has to act like a normal state. You see, right? He's into any of this. And then there's, uh, there's number seven, he has to declare Israel as a Jewish state. And he cannot do that because it is theologically impossible. The real thing that stops peace in the Middle East it's not the Arabs. It's the Quran. Because according to the Quran, the Arabs, the Muslim, Islam, cannot give up any lands, right, that once belonged to the Arabs. Now, I can understand some of the points that he makes here, because yes, it should be that the Palestinians are not glorifying terrorists, paying terrorists for what they, what they have done, uh, blowing up uh, Jewish people. But that could be stated on both sides of the fence there. Because it's also taught in Talmudic literature as well. It's taught about, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, Noahide laws, beheading Christians, and, uh, and, and a whole bunch of other vile things that, you know, this is what happens to Palestinians. They're also, they're supposed to be under Noahide laws as well because they're considered to be Gentiles. And, uh, of course, the rights of the Palestinian Christians are totally not taken into consideration. So, you know, you could look at both sides. But then again, I believe in freedom of religion. They can practice whatever they want as far as religion. But the thing is, is they've got to stop the fighting and the terrorism on both sides. You have Palestinians protesting down at Gaza, and I think the last count is over 800 of them have been shot. Many of them killed. All right, not to mention, we don't ever hear about the Americans that have been killed in Israel by Israeli soldiers, including one woman back in 2003 that was actually ran over by an Israeli bulldozer that also died of her own wounds. These are things that are suppressed in American media and it's never spoken about. 
But you know, the thing is, and he also goes into the video as well, they're very much against what they call the heir of Rav, the more of the, like the secular Jews that are living over in Israel that are not for this type. They, they want to have peace with the Palestinians. They, they're against them. They don't want any, any Jews speaking out there in favor for equality or, or equal rights for humanity because that's not what's part of the Talmudic belief system. And I can tell you this, I know this for a fact. I study Talmud, I have studied it, and I have all the volumes here on my own bookshelf to be able to share with you and show you these things as well. Well, anyway, Chuck had put out a broadcast, which is on his Facebook page. You can go to Chuck Baldwin and just look up Chuck Baldwin at Chuck Baldwin MT. That's his Facebook page. You'll see Chuck's picture here. He's in Washington, D.C. when he was running for president of the United States about 12 years ago. He was speaking right before uh, Ron Paul was going to be speaking there. And uh, that was Chuck at, uh, at the time when he was running for president. If you scroll down, it should be the first video you come to, but uh, actually skip that, the pictures there. Come down here, my eight point Middle East peace plan. And uh, you click on see more, or you can click on there, go to his website, look at this as well. Uh, or actually right up under here, back to Rome. This, he does a very interesting article here when he speaks about this. And then also I would uh, suggest if you go to Chuck's website, Chuck Baldwin Live, and let me just pull that up. He also did a very in-depth uh, newsletter that he put out today that I really, uh, time to put America back in charge of America. This is well worth the read. It's very lengthy. You can also click for it. Uh, for the archive columns and as well you can doesn't cost you anything you can subscribe to chuck's newsletter to where you can get it once a week he writes once a week uh, and always very informative information there and uh, one thing let me encourage you as well because when we have chuck back on we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, some prophecies uh, chuck is going to be starting a prophecies series and he did say when we were recording today this the israel package that he has is a three package uh, set here uh, if you watch the screen on here, it's like a total of 29 uh, videos of sermons he did over a five-year period. He said it's a really great foundational tool. So I just wanted to kind of mention that because we spoke about this in the show today. So if, if you're interested, you want to order that to kind of prepare for some of the things that we'll be talking with Chuck on next week uh, about a series that he's working on now on prophecy, biblical prophecy, putting things in perspective. I think it'd be a real blessing for you as well. But anyway, let's come back over here to the Facebook part here. This is Chuck's eight-point peace plan. I'm going to play it in its entirety. It's three minutes long. I'd like for you to listen to it. Relative to my article excoriating Donald Trump's so-called deal of the century peace plan in the Middle East, a plan that I call not a deal of the century, it's a deal with the devil. Amen. And the devil is the Zionist state of Israel. This deal is really a Palestinian enslaving greater Israel accommodating authoritarian plan that is as warlike and does not do anything to create peace, but it all it does is create further animosity, bitterness, hatred, and war, which I think is what they really want. So anyway, so this fellow says, and you know, again, it's he writes it, so I'm I'm expressing his emotion as he as he wrote it. I mean, it, it just came out of the page. It's not hard. Check. You don't like President Trump's Middle East peace plan. Well, at least he has a plan. What's your plan? Okay. Here is my Middle East peace plan. Are you ready? Eight points. Eight point peace plan. Wait, here we go. Number one, number one, 
get our troops out of the Middle East, period. <laughs> Number two, stop using the U.S. military as Israel's proxy army and stop fighting Israel's wars. Number three, cut off all foreign aid, including to Israel. Number four, stop all of our wars for big oil. Num number five, stop trying to be the world's policeman. Number six, stop all of our foreign entanglements. Number seven, follow the Constitution. And lastly, number eight, seek peace with all nations. It seems to me to be a very reasonable eight-point uh, solution. And on the second point that Chuck made there, when he spoke about stop fighting all of Israel's wars. Now, some people might argue that's not true. We're not fighting Israel's wars. All right, well, let's just take a look at what the rabbi has to say here about that particular issue because Rabbi Kieson does address that issue as well. And, uh, and, and, you know, granted, listen to me. I would be for supporting Israel if they were in danger of being annihilated, especially if Israel was being more of a democracy, more of a peace-loving nation that did try to bring about stability in the Middle East. And you have to understand, it is my kindred that are there. But the thing is, like so many other Jewish people, which I am a Jewish believer, I believe Yeshua, Jesus Christ, to be the Messiah. But like many of my other kindred that are there, many of them are believers. They are totally re neglected by the Israeli government they are suppressed by the Israeli government. They are harassed by uh, several Orthodox communities. Uh, they are threatened by them. The uh, Gobstein, uh, his organization has said that they are uh, all Jewish believers are worthy of death and should die, uh, which goes along with the Noahide laws, by the way. Uh, there are people like Miko Paled, who his own niece was killed by a Palestinian uh, suicide bomber. But his sister, when she was approached by the Israeli media after her daughter was killed by a suicide bomber, she said, now, they said, now you will realize that the Palestinians are bad people. She said, I do not blame the Palestinians. I blame my government for the way you have treated the Palestinians. Listen, if you've ever, you know, it's hard for you to say something unless you've been there and you've walked in those steps. I live there and I did walk in those steps. And if it wasn't for the mercy of Jesus Christ speaking to my heart and moving me out of the way of the suicide bomber that, that detonated herself that killed two of the Israeli uh, policemen that day, I would have also been one of the casualties myself. In fact, the very poll that God told me that uh, when I would go there, that I would not leave, I would stand there with my back to the wind, was torn to pieces with shrapnel. All right? But I'll never forget. I always wondered. And I didn't care for Palestinians back then. I was too Zionist thinking at the time. But it began to really weigh on my heart what would drive that young woman to that position that she was willing to kill herself for it. What did she suffer? What has she gone through that would cause her to go to that emotional state? And I do know that some suicide bombers, when they're rigged up, they're also put with a, another trigger switch in case they don't go through with it, they'll make sure they do. But we never think about what they've been through. We don't think about the Palestinian Christians and what they've been through. Your own brothers that stand for Jesus Christ that are treated like criminals and like prisoners of war. A lot of th these things we don't think about. We don't think about the fact that 50% of those Palestinians are actually native Jews. They are 
the Jews that never left the land, that during the Roman siege of 70 AD, that their families were allowed to live out there because they were the farmers, so they could continue to produce in crops. Yeah, many of them were forced into, um, into the Muslim religion, into the Tur Turkish uh, uh, Ottoman Empire. But that's a different story. Anyway, let me go back though. Chuck said, stop funding all the Jewish wars in the Middle East there. Listen to Rabbi Keese and what he has to say about that. Process. Before the Mashiach comes, the world has to be rid in many ways of the evil in the, that goes on in the world, you see. So you have that. Now the Arab states have been destroyed. Many of them are failed states. You know, you have uh, Egypt, you have Libya, you know, uh, you have, uh, you know, Yemen. These are all basket cases. You think about that, which means that God has destroyed Mishmael. Which is amazing because he did it without Israel having to, in any way to go to war. Trump took out Iran and Israel does nothing. They don't have to do anything. You have any idea what that is? Big Brother came along and took out Iran. You see, what a chesed that God does for the Jews. You don't have to spend any money. You see, and, and that's basically what he... So he's admitting right there to you that we have fought all the wars for him. And they blotted out some of the other names, but it happens to include those seven nations. Isn't it interesting? We don't think about these things, though, do we? And he said the world's got to be rid of all the evil. By the way, that includes Christians. But you don't have to worry. If you're a Judas, you don't have to worry about it. If you're one of those pastors that have sold out your congregation and your flock for the sake of being able to go to safety when everything goes downhill, Yes, I've been made quite aware of what is coming on Americans. I've been made quite aware of what is coming on people like myself and my family because we do stand for the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have not crucified him afresh, but there are those that are doing exactly that. And I cannot speak enough to you pastors that are out there with your big ministries. I employ you. I implore you, my friends, that have been my friends for a long time, you need to really seriously think about what you're doing. I know some of you out there, this is really weighing heavy on your conscience. You don't know how to even handle the nerves that you go through because you know you're lying to the people. There's not much time left, my brothers, my sisters. Step to the side of Jesus Christ. If not, I will have to meet you on the day of judgment. And it will be that you've taken the side of Judas and for money have sold out Christ. You have crucified him afresh by putting the Talmudists back in power, the very Pharisees that Jesus exposed, the head of the serpent that was exposed in Matthew 23, and yet there, there are ministers out there, messianic ministers out there, and I won't call the names there, in respect that perhaps maybe they will repent, but I will not hold my peace always. But I'm begging you to repent and recognize the evil that you're doing. You're, crucif you're allowing Christ to be crucified afresh. Do you not realize what you're doing? Please, I ask you to sincerely consider the evils of the way. And if you want to help people like this rabbi right here, Pray for him that he'll come to know Jesus Christ as his Savior. If you know him or if you know people like him, witness to them the love of Jesus Christ. Show that side that they've never seen before. That's the way we have to approach this. Listen, I've been hearing conflicting messages about our website, Israeli News Live. I want to go there right now. Uh, my webmaster, very good friend has said to me that everything appears to be working good on our website there. Uh, I've had several other people from around the world check it for me because I was also getting reports that it's not been up. It's been down for about a week from what I've been told there. So we're trying to find out from you. If you can leave a comment uh, down below, let us know that our website is up and working. 
uh, because this is the way people help support this broadcast. They go, they click on the donate button here, or they just follow the address here on the screen, which is also at the bottom here. And this is how you help support this work. So if it is down in your area, and it could be that these minions out here are trying to block it in certain areas of the world, let us know if it's down in your area. But if it's not down, if you're able to see it, uh, if you don't, if you would even click on the donate, make sure you can get on there. You know, if we're having any problems, please let us know. We would greatly appreciate that to know that everything is running okay because we're getting two different stories on this that it's not working, it is working, and maybe it's just cross time. Maybe it was down and it got back up again. I'm not really sure, but we'd appreciate your input on this if you'll let us know in the comment section below. Anyway, thank you for watching. The links will be posted as well. Don't forget. First link I'm going to put in there right under the website information will be Fact News Network. We have breaking news that's coming out of Syria. We do do our broadcast live there. Check it out. It'll be a blessing to you, no doubt. I'm Stephen Benin with Israeli News Live.